<sighs> you guys ready to do it? Of course. Ready, ready. Say I, when. I already hit go. Welcome All to right. Practical Shooting After Dark, people. This is your adults only, kids out of the pool podcast. <laughs> if you're playing this in the car with your kids, you're not a very good parent. Or your kids are grown. <laughs> I don't know. It's one or the other. Maybe both. It could be both. They're not mutually exclusive, as it turns <laughs> out. Um, you guys know the deal. We get some uh, yes. get some shooter guys on here. They they come to me with an interesting topic, something that pisses them off, uh, something to show and tell, uh, you know, something going on in uh, in shooting that week, and then we talk about it. On deck today, Mr. Joel Park from Omaha. Hello, everyone. Who, uh, guys, listeners, I know you guys like him. I like Joel too. He's like it's too much. It's like the Joel show lately, which is true, but he's always reliable. He's uh. All your friends have, most of your friends have better things to do, so. Yeah, I have, the, I have the worst friends. They suck. Thanks for making me feel so welcome, though. I appreciate it. You're always welcome, Joel. <laughs> I like having you here. People like you, and it's like, uh, I mean, Joel's just reliable, and, you know, it's like, hey, what's going on, Burdott? No, I'm not really shooting. Oh, Jeff, what's going on? Not really shooting. Okay. <laughs> what's going on, Nick? Not really shooting. Oh, okay. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Thanks, I guess. You're actually you're in that you're in the game, and also Juanza Kim, who is really Hello. shooting all the time, but he can't always be on the show. He's too busy. Uh, you're too busy doing training uh, feedbacks on uh, training group, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 4 a.m. Yes, until 4 a.m. Well, I think you choose to play video games until the middle of the night, and then. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's then very <laughs> accurate. That's yeah, very accurate. I, I still have to train. I play video games in the middle of the night too, but then I get up uh -huh. at like six o'clock in the morning and start doing uh, feedbacks. Yeah. Uh, I gotta keep my round counts up by yeah, shooting on the cyber. That's <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you got any interesting stuff coming to training group, Kim? Yes, we have. What's your recall release schedule? Management. What do you got? What's up? Recall Sorry. management stuff. So in the winter time. Uh, I want. I, I'm doing a couple things that really jumped my performance throughout my shooting career, which is uh, visualization kind of thing and also recoil management thing. So those will be coming up uh, every week. Every week a recoil management thing. Yes. Fantastic. Um, yes. When I like this... Those. this is like a good time of year to be messing around with that stuff. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work, or maybe it takes me a while to figure it out, but... Once I get rolling again in January, that's stuff I plan to try. Let me see what I've preloaded on the video account. So this podcast will drop, should drop December 27th. So we will be, okay, so we'll be two zones into limited nationals when this comes out. So I, I split um, the nationals videos into three zones. So limited nationals talk through, that's in three parts. The third part's coming soon, obviously. Then I've got... Uh, Match talkthroughs, the Archangel Michael Cup, which if you're interested in watching a video that's all in Russian, I did put it up on Facebook a couple, oh, I'm sorry, a couple weeks ago at the time you're hearing this. Um, yeah. Very high production value. You guys saw that video, right? I'm yeah. so impressed. With, I would like to go to that range sometime. I think it's awesome. I have, I've very seen, high quality, very high quality stages and match well put out. Yeah, it's, I saw it. They it's had another crazy. video that was in English also that was maybe like – was subtitled from like 20 minutes or 15 minutes. But that I watched that a from, couple of times. That was from Eurasian, right? Eurasian Experience? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, just like seeing the stages and how it's ran and like – yeah, I like it. it Dude, there's auto subtitle on YouTube. Yeah, I've, uh, I've uh, trained enough at that range at this point where it's like – oh, it's dangerous. Like I walk up to the movers and I like – I just – I know how they all work there. It's – it's, dude, it's, that, it's a little yeah. that Mickey Mouse. That Mickey Mouse target, serious, dude. Yeah, they're not messing around. So uh, anyway, I've got the first person, the hat cam footage of that match. That's coming out in a match talk through. I've got Area Fifty Nine, which was kind of your standard level two USPSA match. I shot that in Texas uh, in November. I've got that talk through to come out. I recorded at Joel because you told me to. I recorded Dry Fire One Hundred One. Working off the outline you gave me, it came. It was like 42 minutes raw footage. Actually, the the video files were so big I couldn't put them on my computer because the file sizes are too big for Windows file system to, to recognize. So I had to cut them on my phone and then, whatever. Anyway, yeah. So a lot of footage. So that that is also coming. And I've been producing dry fire content. So we should have 
uh, dry fire drills from dry fire reloaded coming into training group with the video explanation part of it, as well as uh, dry like live dry fire training sessions, kind of like the other training sessions I've done with live ammo. So you'll see dry fire training. So all that stuff is coming for me, and that should take us through February. I'm hoping to get some uh, get some video with Gaston when I'm in uh, in Argentina in uh, January. So he has a very interesting training style, which has our our training styles. We've influenced each other. We've converged a lot. We have a lot of very similar ideas. He has a lot of ideas that, quite frankly, are stupid about shooting a hundred thousand rounds a year. Like holy crap! Year in year, I'm like. Yeah, he hates dry fire. He's like, this is boring. I want to draw like you, but I'm not going to do dry fire. I'm, it's too boring. And I'm like, well, you're out. You're fucked then. You're out of here. Anyway, so I should be getting some of that stuff. So that stuff's coming. To, for, for the uh, training group members that we have who are podcast listeners, there's quite a bit of overlap there. Anyway, that's what we've been working on. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy about that. So with my travel schedule in the spring, a lot of people you know, may be concerned that there won't be any content coming into the group. You're wrong. It, it's going to be coming. It's coming at a pretty good clip, right, Joel? As our one of our moderators. Yeah, yeah like faster than I can keep up with some days. You can't keep yeah. up with it. Uh, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll uh, carefully use downtime at work so uh, I can multitask on some nonsense QA stuff and yeah, keep up with everything because there is quite a bit, which is good. Yeah, I like it. It's like drinking from a fire hose. So I like it. All right, let's get to the uh, the topics, guys. Let's get to it. Uh, Joel, it's your turn to go first, I think. All right. Well, I plan on talking about training group anyway. Go figure. Did you uh, really? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Well, I'm not I'm not shooting right now. I'm not interested in that. But I I really have spent a lot of time thinking about what I want to do next next year differently. But even my training, I want to just keep changing stuff. So I don't want to train the exact same way I trained this year, the same next next year. So um, one of the things I really like are the, the video submissions for video review. And so I watch, like, whoever, I, I appreciate, I don't think everybody does this. I'll watch, like, some random guy that I have no idea who they are. They post a video, and I will watch that a couple times and just think, like, what what would I tell this person? Or if this was me, what would I, you know, what do I see? What what things would I ask him to correct? What, what things would I point out? And then I'll watch when you guys post your um, coaching and watch that. And like, okay, are they thinking the same thing I'm thinking? And, uh, you know, like, have I done that? Or, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Is that something I do in my shooting? Maybe I'll watch my videos. Uh, stuff like blending position, especially a lot of that stuff. Or maybe I hadn't thought of it. I chop up stuff. I, I do that a lot. Where I'll chop up positions where sometimes you tell somebody to blend something together or how to set up for a next target kind of a thing. Uh, so I try to apply it to my shooting. And then I we talked about, I do like a, I won't call it a coaching, but like a practice group. So it, it gives me uh, ammo, I guess, pun intended, to help out homeboys like, I've, I've seen other people do this. This is what they were told how to fix it. So it's just, just good knowledge for helping other people and like to see how I can make my shooting better. Oh, right. that, that's good. And so you found that helpful? Very much so. so I, I think everyone should be watching everyone's, you know, submissions in there. And even if you're not like the tier where you, you're able to submit videos, just watching everyone else's videos that have been submitted – yeah, because I, I charge people for that. Yeah. But uh, just watching somebody else's, like, what they got out of it, I guarantee that other people are doing – because there's high-level guys on there. Those guys are doing stuff that I'm doing or maybe I'm doing that I don't realize I'm doing. So yes. it's good. We, we, yep. we charge people for the video submissions. So it's uh, – so, what is it? 15 bucks. It takes a good <laughs> chunk of your time to do it. Uh, yes. I mean, it does. I ba let me put it this way. It is every day I am doing some something with training group. I don't have a problem with it. I get paid for it. I don't, I'm not bent about it. It's like it is every day. And if it's I'm not if I'm not on there for a day, like I'm traveling or I'll, I'll message once. I'm like, dude, I'm down for like I can't do anything for like 36 hours. I'm smoked. And uh, and he's like, yeah, I got it. And then he'll do a bunch of feedbacks. Um that, that's almost worse because then I'm like, I want to check on it and make sure everything's okay. But yes, I'm just checking now the, uh, the view counts on that. And about, there's one view for about 
every four members we have in training group. So I can, I can see the view counts for the video feedbacks. Yeah. Um, most people are not watching those. I'm like, I think that's a no brainer. Like you should watch all of them. If you don't want to watch the, the, the unedited one, that's fine. But at least watching the one where you guys are giving feedback, it's just, it's dumb not to. I mean, like, there's there's going to be something you can pick out there that either you're doing or somebody else is doing or maybe you hadn't thought of. So it's just like, it'd be like me sitting there and watching Ben uh, do a class. Like, what you know, one of his skills and drills or fundamentals class. Like, I might not be shooting in the class, but if I just sit there and watch him give the class, I'm going to pick up stuff. Well, so. a, a lot of the problem here is the volume of content. Yeah. So if you, have, if you have me putting up, like, a sort of a substantive long video... I mean, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I've put up a video that's like 45 minutes one, one week. Uh, so you have that. Then you have whatever wants to post, which will be something substantive, maybe taking as much of your time to, take, or to read and understand. And then all the video feedbacks, which come about daily, I would say. It's hard for me to remember yeah. if it's in the public group. or there's. I know we do, we do a private coaching video feedback more than yeah, yeah, but, the, but, but the, yeah, but the public the bulk stuff. of them, yeah, the bulk of them are just where the general, yeah, like the the entry level tier can view those. So I, the, I think the, it's crazy not to be watching the coach those. passengers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's just more stuff for people to watch if they're interested. And what you'll find is there's a lot of is a lot of me just saying the same things. To the same, I mean, to different people, a lot of it's the same issues, and that, that'd be stuff where you want to key in on. It's like, oh, hey, like that, that's that makes sense. Ben keeps saying that. That might apply to me. One, as an aside, this kind of popped into my head today. The first person footage. What do you guys think about that? Because when we started doing training group, I bought a GoPro, started mm -hmm. using it, and my my kind of opinion was, I don't, I'm not really interested in first person footage as far as giving feedback to other people. I have a, I have a GoPro myself to put up video of a stage, people can kind of see what I'm seeing. And a lot of time it's cool to put on Instagram because it, uh, sometimes it looks cool. Yeah. But I'm not particularly interested from instructional standpoint. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I get a lot more from the third person view. It is cool and sometimes you'll get stuff out of it. Yeah, but. I've been getting more than I thought I could out of other people's GoPro footage. As well, I'll say after a few months of doing the video reviews, the go. I mean, I'm not saying do GoPro footage. It's not as good as the third person, but we're getting more than we thought we could out of the GoPro. Is that is that what you think too, Juan? Yeah. Would Especially, you elaborate? Like uh, grip, uh, grip, yeah, recoil yeah, control. Yeah, because I can see people's yeah. grips. Can see their gun position. Um, uh -huh. If they're moving, I can see if like a lot of like uh, today. I just put up a, a feedback of a guy moving around doing a long long movements, but I could see he had two hands on the gun. I could see a shadow on the ground, so I could tell his stride length as he was moving. Um, I could tell a lot of stuff, honestly. I could tell or like a lot. Pulling, yeah. pulling off a target before he's done shooting it kind of a deal? You could, yeah, you could see all the gun movements. You could see all the transition stuff. Yeah, we can see the gun in more detail and like the wrist, uh, wrist we can definitely see if you have a wrist bending issue, that kind of thing, or if you grip it too hard and your grip starts shaking, then we can see the front side shaking, yeah. side to side kind of thing, those details. Yeah, I'm not saying it's ideal, but it's mm. uh, it's better than uh, better than I even I thought. So we're kind of learning as we go with the video feedbacks, I suppose. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, surely you're noticing the same thing with the feedback. Mm -hmm. Maybe. All right. Um, shit. Where were we? My turn. Joel. No, Joel was talking about training group. But he didn't get to his point. I interrupted him. I'm a dick. No, that was my point, man. Oh. oh. You need to be you need to be watching all those. There's stuff I can apply to my shooting or stuff I could use to help other people. But watching those are important. Yes. Very important. There's a lot of great information in there. Yeah. And oh. okay, I guess one more point. You guys both look at shooting a little bit differently. So Ben maybe has more of the don't think about it too hard and wants mm -hmm. it kind of break stuff down. So by watching each of like each of you guys critique people, it's like you get little bits and pieces here and there, and I'm like that's to sound like so cheesy. That's what shooting is, you know. Like you take yeah. a little bit from this person, a little bit from this person. Oh, I like how this person does this. So, and I, I actually really like that Wanzik and I think differently. I do too. 
we kind of think the same things in a broad sense, but the approach, the, the way to get there is different. Yes. So I like that. And I think that benefits people. And I should also say, like, um, we don't divide up uh, clients. Like, the, as far as the private coaching guys or any of the video feedbacks, we don't divide it up. It's not like, okay, you take this guy and I take this guy. Um, if you're signing up for that, you, you're going to get both of us. <laughs> yes. Some, it's, somehow it, it is more based on when things get posted. It's, um, I'm covering at certain times and Kim's covering at other times and you just kind of get who you get. And over, over time, like on, on balance of probabilities, you will end up with getting feedback from both of us at some point for those people. And yeah. I think that that's, that's valuable. Mm -hmm. And then the way we have it formatted is I can see if everything that, that Kim's doing, he can see what I'm doing. So we kind of don't step on each other's dicks as we're giving advice to people. We kind of like, like, like parenting, right? Like I th I'm more compared to the, I'm more compared to like a doctor's office. Like you go to the doctor's <laughs> office and they type in and both of us see the patient file, but you know, you have one guy who's, uh, give it, give it to me straight doc. Yeah. I, I'm that guy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the like, it's like, you know, dude, I've seen it all before, you know, <laughs> you got uh, awards or something where you shouldn't have them. Don't even worry about it. Seen it a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely worry about it. You're fucked, but um, don't be embarrassed, I should say. Yeah. You got six months left to live, but have fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Juan, do you want to go? Yes. So uh, this is a product stuff. Uh, beginning of December, I posted on PSTG already about Shiro's elbow stuff and your forearm health stuff. And uh, in the podcast, I already shared before the nine days nationals about uh, foam roller and lacrosse ball to like massage your body parts and stuff. And if you are a video viewer, li listener, this is called So Right. It's a product for uh, massage, athlete, athletes massage. So uh, forearm health is really important for shooters because we use them so much. We don't want the wrist floppy up and down or gripping too hard. Really uh, strains your forearm muscle. So this thing is shaped in a U shape. So if you just put it on the table and put your forearm on the top, and then just move around in it, then it really relaxes the muscle, it massages the muscle. This is something, it, it massages basically better than the lacrosse ball. It really digs into a certain muscle groups. So it feels great. Like when I watch a movie, I don't make a moaning sound, but I just put it on top and just roll it around. <laughs> Because my wife, you know, my wife is behind me because there's her computer right behind me, so I, I don't get her. I have a wrong idea of watching uh, bad videos. Anyhow, I just roll it around like the top part of the forearm, bottom part of the forearm. It massages everywhere, and it, it really helped me to keep my uh, tendonitis gone. I used to have four tendonitis at once, one time, and I started develop. Uh, really taking care of those muscles because tendonitis is, is very related to the muscle problem too. So check out this product is called So Right, but it's spelled P-S-O, right, as R-I-T. This is like 20 bucks, less than 20 bucks. It really helps me to relax, uh, release the forearm muscle. Feels great. I dig it. Yes. All right, I wanna talk about um how this is the time of the year where even if you're doing an off season, whereas a lot of people, I'm, I'm a, I like off season. We could talk about it at a different time. Uh, why off, taking some time away from shooting is good. But even if you're doing that, there are certain things you need to look after now. Um, you should order, if you have specialized components, hell, even if you don't, start getting your components now if you're if you're switching guns, I know this person, and this isn't the only person who's like that. I know a person who switched guns uh, or was getting a new gun for the 2018 season, and it's the end of 2017. It's like order your gun, order your gun, order your gun. They don't order the gun, and then 
It's February. Like, where's your gun? They don't have it yet. They're still figuring it out. March, where's your gun? April rolls around. Oh, there's the gun. Now the gun's finally turned up in April. Then it's, oh, the gun needs a trigger job. The gun needs this and that. And by the end of 2018, gun still not ready. So not shooting the gun they intended to shoot for 2018 because they were way behind the curve on it. So don't be that person. If you're, if you're switching guns, you need new gear, you're switching dots, anything, just order it now, get it now, make sure that it's all in order. And even though you're not you know, going out training real hard, just put everything together, test it a little bit, make sure it works and be like, okay, so that's taken care of. And then when you get back into it, whenever that might be, maybe it'll be April before you're really training heavy, you're gonna have all your shit ready to go. So please do that. I think that's, uh, I think that's a good way to go. Yes, a lot of discounts in the holiday season too. Yes, for people that uh, <laughs> you're so price sensitive. Hey, I'm cheap too, dude. I'm gonna. Nothing wrong with it. No, you, dude, Joel, you are like you're past cheap. You are like I don't wow. know. <laughs> no, no, it's not in a bad way. I'm not. I'm not oh, knocking okay. it. You're right. like very. You are very frugal. I'm trying to be. All right, let's get to a question because I think uh, I think that'll be fun. Yep. All right, you often comment that stages are not interesting. I, I suppose I often comment that our club is expanding. It's new with USPSA. It's going to have matches in 2018. We want to have interesting and challenging stages, but what what makes one good, one bad, better, or great? Okay, so most match directors want to do worthwhile stages, but may not know how to get them. Okay, I don't. Okay, so what makes stages interesting, good, or bad, or whatever? What do you think? Well, let's talk think, about a, a match. Let's just talk about a yeah. match. Uh, go ahead, Kim. I'm sorry. I was going to say that. Like, yeah. Uh, think about it as a whole match. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole match variety. Short, medium, long courses. Like, not all table start. Like, a table start if you want to. A unloaded start. A, what, like, wrists above shoulders. A, you know, like loaded start, you know, a couple mm -hmm. activated targets. So it's not like a match you'd say like, oh, this was a shooting box match, or this was a table start match, or this was a hose fest. Like variety. I like I like doing those different things. But Yes. So there's two there's two recommendations I can make here that I think are good. Number one, in terms of match design, just like you guys are talking about, like I could take a list of like thirty elements that I want to include into the match or 20 elements, whatever, and it'd be like a little bit of maybe there's one-handed shooting. Maybe I want like a, a, a very stark distance change. Maybe I want a hosing section. Maybe I want a good opportunity for shooting while moving. Maybe I want sort of a, a something that's on the edge of people's ability to shoot while they move. Uh, maybe I want a, a few really long runs, something like that with, where there's no targets for some space, whatever. I mean, you could make a list of any and all that stuff and then break up the match like you guys are talking about into the stage sizes and then go ahead and, and work stuff into the stages, okay? It helps to have more cooks in the kitchen. Like in most situations in life, one cook is the best. In, in this situation, you need multiple cooks. You don't want multiple. You don't, it's not that you... Um, would benefit from multiple. You need multiple people in the mix for it to, in order to make it good. Um, even for me, if I'm building a stage, I like to let other people make decisions, even if they do stuff that I don't like. And I'm like, hey, take these no shoots, just put, put them out there wherever you want, however you like. You got to shoot the stage too, but you just put them out there. And then they might do something a little odd or whatever that I wouldn't do. Cool. Like, that's fine. You, it, as a match director, you got to learn to accept that other people do that stuff. If you start really micromanaging the stages, people get bent and they don't want to help you anymore. Okay, yes. so that's good stuff to do. Um, another thing to, that I'd say is make stuff. What makes stuff truly interesting to me as a shooter is if there's more than one viable option, and I don't mean left to right, right to left. I mean different approaches to the stage. Work your way up the left side shooting while you move versus posting up on the right side. You know, uh, activator sequences that you could shoot differently. You know, putting in, putting in stuff where it's not immediately clear the best way to run it. 
That's the best way I can put it. If it's not immediately obvious to me how I'm going to want to shoot it, that's interesting. That is by, de by default. That is, that is something that I find interesting. So we like that stuff. Uh, I would stay away, if you can, stay away from making arrays of targets. Mm -hmm. So what that, that that's what most yeah, matches you, have. Would you elaborate what you mean by arrays? An, an array together? is like there's basically a bunch of targets at the same, relatively the same distance of difficulty that it's clearly best to shoot them together in one group. Like pop, 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 an array of targets. Instead of an array, it'd be like a target at 20 yards, a mini popper over here, target at five yards over there. That's not in an array, really. It's individual targets set at different distances and difficulties right that's more of a, a thing that you'll see in ipsc it's like yeah. it'd be targets at different dif distance of difficult difficulties i would stay away from arrays the other thing i would stay away from is sort of uh being real predetermined on your round count when you're designing a stage if you design a stage this happens to me sometimes i design a stage that's it's a it's a great stage looks interesting you know, it's got it's got a few of the elements I'm looking for. I'm like, okay, I wanted some long movement in here with really not a whole lot to do in that section. But then, like, this interesting bit here where you could shoot on the move over there. And then you've got to really stop and shoot this 20-yard plate. And then, you know, whatever. I've designed a stage that I like. I think it's interesting. But it's uh, 19 rounds. What I don't want to do at that point is add in a bunch of more targets to get it to a, some predetermined round count. If I have a 19-round stage that's interesting... Uh, typically adding more targets at that point is not going to make the stage better or more interesting. It's just going to make the round count go up, drive up the hit factor, and sort of drive down how interesting it is. Right? It ends up being less interesting then. Usually. Uh, For to me, elaborate. I think the, the ratio of the difficulty is very important. So basically, what I the matches I really enjoy and what matches people enjoy a lot is enjoyable match but also challenging match not like uh, impossible match so sometimes i see oh we're gonna make a variety of things so let's say there's six stages and all six stages have different starts like one is hands relaxed one is hands up one is empty like if you do every single stage differently uh so i want to say this at least about 70 percent should be what usually people practice and those are very enjoyable and i think 25 percent should be somewhere like challenging so if there is a possibility of making mistake kind of thing and like five percent should be something very challenging or new so it's not like you, oh we're gonna make it tough so making every single stage low port and like every single stage unloaded start kind of thing but making it like at least 70% enjoyable for most people who at least practice a little bit. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it could be like if there is a 10 stages, maybe seven stages are pretty common start position and 20% could be very interesting and challenging position. And maybe one stage is, I don't know what's difficult position, maybe uh, like I don't know, wiggly bridge kind of thing. Just one stage. Those can be keep it interested and challenging, but also most of the time it's enjoyable shooting. Yeah, I mean, how about this? You can make you if you set the stages up correctly, um, to where I mean, a lot of times the good stages are built by good shooters because they understand what people's capabilities are. Mm -hmm. um, if you set the the, the targets at uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 yards, and you know, they're, they're open targets, maybe some poppers and stuff like that. A lot of times that's more interesting and more difficult than 20 yards because if you put it far enough away, everybody's going to stand still and shoot. If you're going to, if you put it, you know, more mid range, the, the better guys start to get tempted, like, oh, I want to shoot this on the move. And in, in that situation, they're, they're bringing the difficulty and putting it on themselves. All right. Yeah. Uh, that ends up, again, that makes the stage more interesting, not less. If you try to like, cram stuff down people's throat, uh, I mean, yeah, it's still a good, it's still a test of shooting skill. It's just not as, not as interesting. 
Yeah. If I can walk up to the stage and just be like, okay, there's there's three positions here. I'm gonna shoot from these three. I'll just pick the order. And like that's pretty much it. That's not very much fun. But what I've seen, and it seems like it happens more with the lower round count stages, um, where you have real vi- like you're saying, real viable options. But then it generates so much conversation within the group because I like that stuff. You know, like, yeah. hey, what do you think about? Oh, I think it maybe it's better to, to. I need to move and draw, and I'm gonna come up here to this, or I'm gonna shoot this on the move. You know, like. What do you think is the best way to shoot it? And everybody shoots it a little bit different, and there's probably more more than one way to win the stage. And like talking about that that conversation or a uh, a disappearing target, it's like it's it's not one of the no brainer ones. Like hey, you know maybe I'll have to do a load if I shoot this one. You know how much extra time is going to be? You kind of do the math, or you know what do you think? But like, that's really fun when you have you know a squad of your friends and you're all you know it's a puzzle and you're all talking about it. What do you think the best way is? And based on your skill level, you make a plan. But there's a lot of conversation compared to everybody just walks up like, okay, I guess we're here. You look at it, it's like, okay, there's one way to shoot it. Who's up? Who's up first? Yeah, like that, that's not as exciting. Absolutely. And uh, where, where's the stages you've shot that are by and large the most interesting, Kim? You mean okay. the whole whole shooting career or nationals? Uh, the whole shooting career. Whole shooting career. Uh, I think the most interesting one was definitely from uh, the European Open this year at Czech Republic. Uh, there was was the last stage I shot, but the orientation of the stage was you're either moving left to right or right to left, so you can decide on that. And there was a swinger at about 15 yards, and then there was like two different ways or three different ways to to engage sequence. One is pretty rewarding, but pretty tough. But most of the shots, uh, actually there was variety distance. Uh, the, the starting position had like seven yard to five yard shots. And then once you go to one port was about seven to like 15 yard. And then the next port was about 10 to 20 yards, something like that. So each port has different distances, but one is like slightly closer side one is medium side, one is a little bit far side, but nothing over 20. It was interesting. Interesting. Yes. yes. And All right. one port had multiple different... So you can shoot this target from one port, or you can still shoot that from another port. So that's a viable option you were talking about. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I, I have... I used to go round and round with this a guy who's a friend of mine. You know him, Wanzik. You may not yeah. know who I'm talking about, but you're <laughs> friends with this guy. We used to go round and round when he was building stages. He'd be like, well, he, would build, he was the guy building the stages. So he's now emotionally invested, and I'm the mm-hmm. a-hole who's showing up to his match to shoot his stages, and I'm not emotionally invested. And he's like, well, there's options on this. And here's, you can see these things from these places, so you have options. And I'd be like, no, dumbass, because those are stupid options. If yeah. everybody ends up shooting it the same way except for the idiots, then it's not really options. That I mean, so I'd be like, oh, okay. And then after a while, like as you know, as both of us got better at shooting, he he was you know like, hey, making super interesting stages. And then of course he burned out and stopped being match director. So you know that's the way it goes. <laughs> Damn it. There's a, a couple of my uh, local clubs build quite good club matches like quite good quite interesting but it's a, i think it's a rare thing to, to see really truly good stages it's not it's not very common so if you have a club that puts on really good like truly good stages you should treasure that shit because it's cool all right um guys thank you so much for coming on i do appreciate you guys uh doing the podcast with me so that gives people something to listen to listeners if you have a question you'd like the answer to go to bensteger.com send me your question don't instagram dm me facebook me any of that shit go to my website email me click podcast question in the submission form it goes into my email it's searchable i can find it that's the way i'm going to get it all right thank you very much people for listening